Hello everyone, welcome to Screen Screen on Viola. Sorry for the delay, but instead of stopping the show, I think it would be better if I could catch up. So today, I'm going to talk about movies that are related to difficult lives. Hope that can cheer us up and see that our real lives are actually much better. Let's start with the first new movie we're going to talk about today. Hitman. No. Gary Johnson no. is the most no, sought-after professional Boy. killer in New You're Orleans. To his clients, he is like something out of a movie. The mysterious gun for hire. But if you pay him to rob out a cheating spouse or an abusive boss, you'd better watch your back he works for the cops. When he breaks protocol to help a desperate woman trying to free an abusive husband, he finds himself becoming one of his false personas, falling for the woman and flirting with turning into a criminal himself. I realize not everyone fantasized about this. Wow, I think the English introduction is so different from the Mandarin one. I wonder which one is closer to the actual movie, but they both sound interesting. Hitman was directed by director Richard Linklater, and it has been 25 years since he directed another action movie, but actually Hitman is a crime romantic action comedy so it's not a pure action movie but you can still enjoy it very much and it stars Glenn Powell from Top Gun Maverick who's been pretty famous recently and Adria Arjona from Mobius and Austin Emilio what I like about the plot the most is that it's actually adapted from the true story of a legendary undercover cop in Houston in the 1990s. I always love real stories, and movies adapted from real stories are even more interesting because usually you will think, oh, how come this can be true? But it is true, even if there are some exaggerated parts in the movies. When you go back to check the actual event, you will find it even more unbelievable. Okay, so let me tell you something that I learned from the Mandarin introduction. Actually, the undercover cop who pretends to be a killer has been suspended from his cop work. Just one day that happens. And Gary, he looks similar to that cop and is invited to replace for his position. And that's how it happens. And actually, when it comes to the origin of Hitman, director Richard Linklater said that back in 2001, he read an article on Texas Monthly written by Skip Hollandsworth about this legendary cop, Gary Johnson, in Houston, who pretends to be a killer. He read that and he really wanted to make this story a movie, but only 22 or 23 years later that this movie finally comes out. So if you're also interested in adapted movies, this is the one you can go watch this weekend. And now let's move on to the second new movie we're going to talk about today, which is from Asia. Following, Kujong Tae is a real estate agent. His secret hobby is peeping into the private lives of other people. He sometimes uses his job to go into his client's home to pursue his hobby. Kujong Tae becomes interested in social media influencer Han Sola who posts staged stuff like photos of vegan salads while eating convenience store sausages. He begins to observe her more closely. One day, Han Sola visits Kuzong Tae's real estate office as a client and entrusts her home key to him. Kuzong Tae later sneaks into her home and uncovers a surprise. After that, someone who knew he entered Han Sola's apartment threatened him. Kujong Tae is then brought into the police station and questioned by detective Oh Yong Ju. Kujong Tae decides to find the criminal that is responsible for his troubles by using Han Soda's social media account. The second new movie we're going to talk about today is a Korean movie, 
It sounds really interesting, but don't worry, it's not based on true story. Apparently, it's a crime movie, and it starred by Shin Hye Sung, who started acting 11 years ago. Although she's a pretty famous actor, I don't really know her because I don't follow K-pop that much. But this time, she plays the protagonist in Following, although her character is dead from the very beginning. Her character Han Soda is somebody who eagers to be paid attention to. She loves attention, and as an influencer, she emphasizes her images in front of others very much. She often demonstrates how luxurious and how much she loves animals in front of people. Besides Sing Hye Sung, they also cast Byung Yoo Han and Yi Air. The main plot of following is about the protagonist Ku Jong Tae is trying to figure out who killed the woman I peek into. As we heard in the introduction, Han Sola would post vegan salads onto social media, but at the same time, she's actually eating sausages at the convenience store, and this and this makes Ku Jong Tae interested, and that's the reason why he starts observing her. Since it's a murder case, of course, the person who maybe kills Han Sola will threaten. Kujonte after they know Kujonte actually goes into Han Sola's house, but at the same time, the police who's investigating this case, Oh Youngju, suspects that Kujonte is the killer. What's so interesting is that following is the second cooperation between Pyongyang Han and Shin Hye Sung. Shin Hye Sung said that it's really Unbelievable that it has been seven years since their last cooperation. She played Byung Yoo Han's wife the previous time, but because she was dead in that work, she didn't have many opportunities to play in the same scenes with Byung Yoo Han. So she was very excited to hear that she could cooperate with Byung Yoo Han once again. But she's dead again, so she really hopes that. They can cooperate with each other the next time. That's just so funny. So if you like crime movies or you like Korean movies in this topic, you can go watch Following this weekend. And before we move on to Top Double O Seven and talk more movies about difficult lives, let's review what we had from last week first. Top three: Haiku, the movie, decisive battle at the garbage dump. Top two was The Fall Guy. And top one, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Let's check out top seven to top four. Top six, Haiku the movie, decisive battle at the garbage dump. Top five, The Strangers, Chapter One. Twilight of the Warriors, Wall Street. 入得嚟成就，你帮人，人帮你。苏醒啊，希。Top four, The Fall Guy. Anyone but him. I didn't approve him. You know that. You are literally the last person on earth I want to see. Wow, Haiku the movie decisive battle at the garbage dump is really long lived, but we've talked about it already, and we have the Strangers Chapter One as a newcomer. But I'd like to talk about Twilight of the Warriors World Inc. It's selected to have its premiere at the Cannes Film Festival. And we can say that this is one of the only real Hong Kong movies for a very long time. It stars Louis Ku, and the story is about the Kowloon Walled City, which represented the underground world before 1997, when Hong Kong went back to China. So when it comes to difficult lives, of course we have to talk about Twilight of the Warriors World End. The protagonist of this movie is an illegal immigrant from China to Hong Kong. Originally, he wanted to have a fake ID, so he went to someone for it. 
I wouldn't say that he deserved it because he's trying through some illegal channels. He didn't have any other choices. But the gangster tricked him as well. So he ended up running into the Kowloon Walled City and seeks shelter from Tornado. I don't know if I can call him Tornado. Anyway, the character of Louis Ku. And the rest is history. No, the rest is spoiler. I would like to talk about that if Twilight of the Warriors World End is still on the chart next week. Uh, let me tell you why this movie is so good. Because it has been a long time since Hong Kong made a real kung fu movie for a long time. But you know, Twilight of the Warriors World End is not just a kung fu movie. It's about gangsters. It's about life in the world city. And it's about how people cooperate with each other, take care of each other in this area that nobody cares. And they're really trying hard to have a good life. That's very touching. So if you haven't watched it, I highly recommend it. And now let's move on to top three to top one. Top three, Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. Top two, imaginary friend. I can help you. How? Cause I'm a kid. You are the chosen one. No, no. Let's not give her a complex. Good luck, short stack. It's all top one. Kingdom it's of the Planet of the Apes. There are dangers beyond our village. Okay, not many new faces from top three to top one this week, and we've talked about all of them. But I'd like to talk about Furiosa: A Mad Max Saga once more. Cause I like it very much, and I haven't had the time to finish writing the review. So let's talk about it. In its prequel, Mad Max, we only know that Furiosa is the commander. Can I say commander of Immortal Joe? But actually, we know nothing about her background. So in this episode, you can say this is her hero story, her individual film. We get to know all about her, and actually, before they filmed Mad Max, director already started thinking about the story of Furiosa, and in order to help the crew and the actors to get familiar with the view of the world and all the characters, director and the screenwriter actually wrote the background story of other characters. You know that's the homework you need to do writing a script. So the actress who played Furiosa the last time, Charlize Theron, actually asked director whether they can film Furiosa first when she finished reading the script. So you can tell how strong the story of Furiosa is. And to be honest, I would say only after Furiosa: A Mad Max Saga is released. That Furiosa's character arc is completed. We didn't know why she's there in the middle of the desert last time, and we didn't know why she lost her arm. We didn't know why she's so tough as a commander. We just figured that okay, maybe in order to survive in this post-apocalypse world, you have to be tough like that. But in this episode. All these are soft. We get to know her background. We get to know why she's so tough. What changed her? We get to know why she lost her arm. And I know some people criticize that there's a potential romance that's not so strong in the movie. Well, this is not spoiler. I wouldn't I wouldn't tell you what happened, but actually I think. They handled that pretty well. I mean, when I saw that, I wouldn't think it's a romantic relationship. I think it's just respect to someone who's your superior or your comrade. And yes, it's a potential romance. And what's so cruel about it is that it gets stopped before the potential. 
and that's even sadder, and that's part of the saddest stories in Furiosa's life. So I like that part actually, and I believe Furiosa will still be on the chart next week, and maybe we can talk more about it later. For now, that's all the time we have for today. Hopefully, I can catch up next week, and remember to come back for more shows. I'm Viola. See you next time.